where God is separating the foolish virgins from the wise. So don't take lightly this hour that we are in, even in America, says the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, I just had to obey the Holy Ghost before I preach. Amen. Amen. <laughs> because I want to be in right standing with Him. Because <laughs> I'm on duty. I'm in active duty right now. Amen? Amen. I have been enlisted as a soldier. Hallelujah. And I have a commanding officer to report to. And I have angels that are doing the report on me. Amen? Amen. And there are angels that follow you doing a report. Whether you didn't know it or you didn't know it, now you know it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Heaven's keeping a record. And there is a book of life. And I thank God my name is written in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Man, I, I'm telling you, I feel the weight, weight of this. This is a heavy matter. This is not something like that. I pray God help me to even preach this morning. If you're not winning souls, you, need, you, don't, you don't need to leave this church today without getting it right and making whatever adjustment needs to be made. If you've got to come to the altar, whatever you got to do, cry out to God, rearrange things, because time is short. Amen? And you want to have treasure when you get before the glory of God to lay down at Jesus' feet. You don't want to be empty handed. And I'm praying that you will not be empty handed on that day. Amen. That's my prayer. Amen? Amen? Because that's not God's will. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's go to Luke chapter 14 this morning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Love will tell you the truth. Hallelujah. Love will counsel you. Only people who don't care about you won't tell you the truth. And you got a lot of places like that in America. We're living in the land of the lay of the sea in church. The land of the lukewarm. The land of the spewed out of Jesus' mouth. And I pray that will never be you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 14, verse 11. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, rank below others who are honored or rewarded. God's honoring people this morning. God's rewarding people this morning. Can you say amen? amen? And he who humbles himself keeps a modest opinion of himself and behaves accordingly will be exalted and elevated in rank. There's an elevation in rank taking place this morning by the Holy Ghost and by the Word of God. God is elevating people and placing people in different greater ranks this morning. Thank you, Jesus. There's a word for what just happened right there. There's a scripture for you. And I didn't even know that that was going to come into play like that. But thank you, Jesus. Jesus also said that a man who had been invited by him, when you give a dinner or supper, don't invite your friends or brothers or relatives or wealthy neighbors, lest perhaps they also invite you in return and you are paid back. But when you give a banquet, that's what we've been doing the last two days, if you didn't know. If you didn't know, we just not only soul with it. Hallelujah. There's been a great banquet that God has prepared these last two days over this weekend. And I'm the servant with invitations. 
that's been sent by God concerning his great banquet. So it's not just soul winning that we've been doing. There's been a great banquet that God has prepared, even this morning. So it's not just soul winning. Praise the Lord that God is elevating people in. It's the great banquet of God. And you finna find out about that. Hallelujah. But when you give a banquet or reception, invite the poor, the disabled, the lame, and the blind. Then you will be blessed because they have no way of repaying you. And you will be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. You'll be rewarded. Amen. There's some rewards again. You don't hear about this much. Amen. In most churches. When one of those who reclined at the table with him heard this, he said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So that lets you know that at God's great banqueting table, there's the bread of life. Hallelujah. And we've been eating that bread of life these last two days. Thank you, Lord. Now, verse 16 is where I want to get to. But Jesus said to him, A man was once giving a great supper. Hallelujah. And invited many. And invited many. A great supper. Notice he didn't say a little supper. God this weekend has been putting on a great supper for you. And for me. A great supper has been poured out Friday night, Saturday morning, and even right now. There's a great supper. You say, how do I know? Because I know the chef. God is the chef. <laughs> Hallelujah. You better get to know the chef. Praise the Lord. And what he's cooking. Hallelujah. God is cooking. God cooked up a great meal Friday night. Listen, my God don't serve microwave meals. My God don't serve McDonald's religious meals. My God serves seven course meals. Praise the Lord. My God does not serve up leftovers. Never has my God served me leftovers. Every time God has a great supper, it is a great supper. It is seven course. It is fine dining. Hallelujah. And he's the chef. How many ladies in here? You cook. Raise your hand if you lady and you cook. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's, let's break it down where you can explain it. All right. If you cook jollof rice. <laughs> hello. And you're going to really do it. I mean, you're going to be like the Nigerians. And you put everything in there and then some. Shrimp, sausage, hallelujah, chicken, vegetables. And in some things, you don't even let people know what's up in there. Amen? <laughs> hallelujah. It takes time to cook a good jollof rice. It takes preparation. It takes going to the grocery store. It takes walking through the aisle, standing in line, washing the dishes, preparing all the food. It takes time. It's a great supper. It takes work. It takes love. It takes prep work. Can you hear me this morning? Hallelujah. We're not talking about McDonald's. Most churches in America have no meals. But that's not how God is. God does not serve little meals. God serves feasts. We're headed towards the marriage supper of the Lamb. And we're getting a taste of the things that So mama, if you prepare all the meals, you spend all that money. It costs money to put on a good meal. You wash all the dishes. Then you don't go down to the dollar store and buy the cheap plastic junk if you finish. You pull out the china. You pull out the goods. You pull out the stuff that, you, that is special. That's my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what God has been serving up and doing Friday night, Saturday, and even today. God has put a lot of time into this.
this meal. And then God sends a servant. God called me from Honolulu. I was minding God's business. And God called me through praying in tongues with our church and said, son, I've got invitations to my great supper and I need you to go get out the invitations. And I loaded, I, I got rid of everything, sold everything, gave away everything and jumped on a plane with a three-month-old and flew 10 hours and for the last four months, me and my wife and three-month-old, four-month-old have been running with the, the power of the gospel, giving out these invitations to God's great supper. Why do you, would you do that? Because when God invites you to his great supper, I could not tell the Lord no. I told my church, we have a church in Maui, Hawaii. They're going to be watching this morning. I haven't been there four months. They're watching every service, going out on the streets. They went out on the streets with us yesterday in Maui, Hawaii. For they passed the test. And if you're watching, i got good news for you. In Maui, you guys passed the test. And you are being rewarded. And you're stepping up into another rank. Says the Holy Ghost, great job you guys. You think it doesn't take rearranging and making adjustments? We all busy. Hello? We all busy. You think I wasn't busy? I had a business, a church. Sold the business. Why? The man is preparing a great supper, and I don't want to miss it. He's invited me. Hallelujah. He's invited me. I told my church. God has been too good to me. I had a beautiful condo overlooking the mountains and the ocean on the island of Oahu in Honolulu. A prosperous business flying to Maui, Hawaii every weekend to preach the gospel. But God has been too good to me. I can't miss out on this great supper. I can't refuse the invitations. God has been too good to me. This is what I'm telling my church. I got to go. I'm not going to be missing out on no great supper. I told the Lord, I'm not missing out. I, yeah, I'm not saying no. I'm showing up. Because I know what you have done. I know what's on the table. Many people, they don't know what's on the table. To back you off from the table. His desire is to push you out of the table. And he'll use business. He'll use money. He'll use girlfriends. He'll use all kinds of things to back you off of that table. To get you out of the presence of God. He did it to Adam and Eve. He pushed them out of that garden. He don't want you by the table of the Lord. He don't want you eating from the table. He wants you eating dumb. He don't want you eating from the table this morning. But there's a table of great supper here prepared for you and for me this morning. And I, you say, well, who in the world are you? I'm the waiter. I'm the waiter. This is the menu. This is the menu. This is God's menu right here. And I'm here just to tell you what's on the menu. It ain't up to me. If you don't eat, it ain't my fault. If you nitpick at your, at your plate, it ain't my fault. If you don't drink your living water, I might end up drinking it for you because I'm thirsty. I'm a thirsty believer, man. I'll drink your living water. Hallelujah. If you don't want your new wine, I'll drink it. Yeah, what's on the table of the Lord? People forgot what's on the table. Take for granted the table of the Lord. First thing when you go to a restaurant, what do they serve you? What's the first thing they serve you? Water! Water! God serves up living water this morning, and all week he's been pouring out living water. First thing you get as a Samaritan, he said, woman, if you have the gift of God, and who he was, that serves to you, you would have asked of me, and I would have given you. That woman 
didn't know the gift of God. She didn't know what was on the board. If you knew, if thou King James, if thou knewest the gift of God, she didn't know what she didn't know the living water. She didn't know that what, what was on the table. She found out, hallelujah. Maybe you don't know what's on the table, but you can sure find out. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You can drink living water right now. You don't have to wait to the end of the service when every head is bowed and every eye is You can tilt your head back, my God, and just drink, 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 drink. Most of the churches don't know how to drink. You know how many sober Christians there are all across America right now in churches? Sober! Sober! They don't know how to drink. They know how to think. This is not the hour to think, church, about the things of God. This is not the hour to contemplate. This is the hour to drink from the fountain of living water. I think that's the name of the church. If you got a name like that, you better know how to drink. You better know how to drink. Some people don't even know how to drink. They don't even know there's scriptural proof that you can drink. They, you know, the devil deceives people and thinks that he's the only one with a drink. If there's a counterfeit, there's got to be a real. Hello? Go to the liquor store, wine and spirits. People in the church, man, they, when they were serving the devil, they knew how to drink. They drink all night long. Then they come to the church. They don't even know how to drink. They didn't even find out how to drink. That's the first thing on God's table. <laughs> you mean so we you how to drink from Scripture? Who wants to know how to drink from Scripture? Over here. One person, two people, three, four. Okay, let me see over here how many people want to drink. How many of y'all want scriptural proof that you can drink and know how to drink? Raise your hand. Two people, three. Okay, I like this church better over here real quick. Let me go here. I'll come back. I'll come back. Because they're a little bit more thirstier. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 12, verses 3. With joy. With joy. That means you got to go with joy. So if you're depressed, you can't drink. If you was depressed in the Old Testament, you couldn't even be a minister. You couldn't even stand up and preach if you was depressed. Because he'd get on the people. God didn't want depression on his people. With joy shall you. He's talking to me. So that means I got to do something with joy. What do I got to? I got to do something with joy. I got to go with joy. With joy shall you. Shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. When you get saved, you get a well. You get wells. Woman in Samaria said, that well is deep. And you ain't got nothing to draw with. Where would you get this living water? The well is deep. She didn't know how to drink. She didn't even know what her bucket was. If you're going to draw from that living water, if you're going to draw from the fountain of life, baby, you got to have something to, you got to have something to drink. You got to know how to get your bucket and drop it down on the side of you and pull up that living water so that you can be refreshed, your wife can be refreshed, your family, your business, your church, or else you're going to be dried out. What are you drawing? Therefore, with joy. Joy is your bucket that pulls the water up. The devil stole your bucket you can't, you, you can't get no living water. <laughs> you can't pull no living water if you, ain't, if you ain't got your bucket. You ain't gonna drop it down in there. With joy. So that means I gotta take joy, drop it in the water, and pull it up. Some people forgot how to laugh. When God says in Psalms 2, He sits in the heavens and laughs. He didn't say He sits in the heavens and cries. People know how to pray in tongues. They know how to do that, but they don't know how to, they don't know that that joy comes from the same place. And they can, you can pray in tongues anytime you want. You can cut it off. Why? I'm not operating in the gift of the Spirit. I'm operating in my personal prayer language. Joy comes from the same place. I can activate the joy anytime I want to. I did it this morning. <laughs> what am I 
doing? I'm activating the joy. I'm dropping my, my bucket down and pulling the living water up so I can be refreshed. And so I can refresh others, you, this morning. If you're not going to get splashed. You're not going to get activated. So in all you're getting, learn how to take joy and, and drop it down in the nation. If you didn't, I just, I just handed out a, a massive weapon right now. If you didn't know, I just gave you a weapon to put in your arsenal. Job 5.22 says that destruction and famine, you shall laugh, not cry. God commands the church to laugh and they don't even know it. That means symptoms coming against me. <laughs> the devil said you're not going to make it till past 45. <laughs> At destruction and famine, you shall laugh. Yeah. Amen. That's what he commanded the church to do. You better learn how to laugh. When the Lord returned the captives of Zion, we were like men who dreamed it seemed so real. Then was our mouths filled with laughter and our tongues were singing. And the heathen said, the Lord has done great things for them. Psalms chapter 126. See, these, these things are powerful. This is on the table of the Lord this morning. Next thing, you know, if you if you got to get past this before you can get to the, to the new wine. In order to get to the new wine, you at least got to learn how to drink from the water. If you, if you trip over the water, you definitely go, you definitely go get offended at the new wine. Well, let me ask you something. When's the last time you've been drunk in the Holy Ghost? When's the last time you've been drunk in the whole in comatose in the Holy Ghost? Intoxicated. When's the last time you needed a designated driver coming up out this place? When's the last time if a cop pulled you over, leaving church, you couldn't walk a straight line? If it's been too long, man, you you just lift your hand and say, Lord, I need a drink. You know what that woman in, in she said, Lord, give me a drink. Give me a drink. That woman was wise, dude. Give me a drink. She was unashamed about this drink. That's just the living water. You go to John 7, then he talks about the new wine on the last great day to feast. Jesus stood up and cried out with a loud voice. So if you don't like loud preachers, you might not like Jesus. <laughs> you don't like me, you might not like Jesus either. Because if you didn't know this morning, it's not the skinny white boy preaching. Jesus said, it's not I that do it to work. It's my Father's Spirit. He's doing it. So the Holy Ghost is speaking through me. If offended at me, you might be offended at him. Don't miss your day of visitation. God doesn't normally come the way we think he should come. Nor does he normally use who we think he should use. Lord, if you'd have been here four days earlier, my brother Lazarus wouldn't have died. <laughs> He's not dead, he liveth. See, Jesus don't come the way we think he should come. But he always comes. <laughs> he always comes. And to the humble and the thirsty, they can receive them. Blessed is he who does not get offended in Jesus' name. John 7, 37, on the land. We're talking about the table of the Lord here this morning. We're talking about the great supper and what's on the table that we don't want to miss out on. Amen? John 7, 37, on the last great day of the feast. Great feast. See there? There's the God, God's feast again. Jesus stood up and cried out with a loud voice. If any man or woman is thirsty. Come on, let's read the word. He got it. He read the word. He knows the word. <laughs> if any man or woman is thirsty. And think. Did he say think? No. Did Jesus say come unto me and think about it? No. What do you say to do? Drink. Drink. And my Bible said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, 
today and forever. So if he was calling people to come drink beer, you said it, not me. He's calling people this morning to come and drink right now. <laughs> I think I'll just take a big drink right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've come to enjoy the table of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen? I've come to receive. I've come to drink. Hallelujah. I'm not thinking about nothing. I'm not missing out of my head this morning, church. I'm not thinking about one thing I'm saying. I'm ministering out of my belly. Hallelujah. Amen. Out of the living water that's on the inside of me. I'm letting you. Amen. My God, and when this living water touches you, you're never going to be the same again. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm not just preaching. I'm a drinking preacher. I drink on the job. I learned how to drink on the job. Why? If you go to churches like I do, some churches are funeral parlors, cemeteries, dead folk. And if you're a preacher and you got to go in there and raise the dead, you better learn how to drink or that death and that funeral power of spirit will come on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That museum might come on you. Oh, yeah. So as a preacher, now you can see why I got to learn how to drink. I've been in probably 30, 35, maybe almost 40 churches in the last four months. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Amen. You go into 40 churches in the Washington, D.C. area and see how you fare. <laughs> I say, you go into D.C., in the white churches, in Spanish churches, in African American, and you go and see what, how you look after, after 40 churches. And you go try to carry revival. In the living water. Some of them people are meaner than junkyard dogs. Some of them people look at you and you wonder, is there any life in there? Like the prophet said, can these bones live again? Oh Lord, only you know. Only you know. I don't know. Hallelujah. I don't know. They may cannot. I don't know, Lord. Uh, speak to the bones. Uh, uh. Why me if this cup could pass? Nevertheless, Lord, not, not my will, but thy will be done. You have places men care, care more about their political association than they do about Jesus. <laughs> you got all kinds of folk. I tell you, man, I go to church all kinds. I go in Nigeria. In some places are phenomenal. I've got a Nigerian church, man, in Alexandria. These people are off the chain. After every, after every prayer, they say, Amen, fire! After every amen is a fire. <laughs> They'll fire your behind. Fire! <laughs> Pray over the mashed potatoes. Amen, fire! <laughs> now to so and so. Bless her in Jesus' name. Amen, fire! <laughs> I pray, they pray fire on everything. Fire on the plants. Amen. Amen. Fire. Fire on every amen. I like that. I like that. It's in the middle of Nigeria. It's in Alexandria, Virginia. Bless Grandma. Amen. Fire. Whole church. Amen. Fire. All of them get fired. Amen. Amen. Pray on your boss. Amen. Fire. Your boss is fire. Fire him. Hallelujah. Don't mess with them Nigerian people in Alexandria. Dude. They'll pray a prayer. Amen. And fire you. Get with them. Amen. Yeah, I just jump up. Amen. Fire too. Hallelujah. Jill off rocks. We're going to bless it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Fire. Amen. I tell you, I've been to some places. Amen? <laughs> I went to one church and a pastor fell asleep the whole service. <laughs> Brother, the pastor fell asleep the 
my whole service. I'm preaching on evangelism, souls, the heart of God. And he's over there snoring. And it wasn't an accident either. They handed him out the soul with his fist. He woke up, took it, and went right back to bed. I told my wife, can you go get this pastor a pillow? Pastor, would you like a blanket, brother? You know what I mean? You want to, can we wheel in a mattress in here for you? Welcome to Washington, D.C. Fire! <laughs> Fell asleep in the service. You know you ain't doing good when a pastor falls asleep throughout the whole service. There's a problem. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you where that is either in Jesus' name. Amen? <laughs> so there's new wine on the table. There's joy on the table. Right? Then there's the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is on the table. Oh, the Lamb is hot. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the Word of God. The Word made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory is on the table this morning. My God, how hungry are you? Oh, churches, they're not hungry. They're looking at their watch. Trying to go see if they can beat the Episcopalians to Golden Corral. They ain't, they ain't hungry, man. They trying to beat other churches to Golden Corral because of the fried chicken. I can't believe he went past the time he was supposed to go. I was gonna go home and watch them red skins and eat me some ice cream. Go get the car, if I'm tired. He's I've heard all this before in Jesus' name. Fire! Fire! Call my Nigerian friends over here and fire him in Jesus' name. You're not going to make it like that, man. You know what I mean? You're not going to rise up and take the land like that. You're not going to rise up with that kind of religion. That kind of religion spends more hours in a movie than in a service on Sunday morning. People will go and eat this nasty, buttery, chemical laced popcorn, coke that's laced with God knows who. No wonder why we got to pray, Lord, if we drink any deadly poison. Lord, let it not harm us. I said, oh my God, I drink Diet Coke. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you can drink Diet Coke, but you better pray in Jesus' name. Amen? You better pray. But they, they in the business of killing folk. They're looking for the dollar. You know the food pharmaceuticals are in, in cahoots with the drug company? Mm -hmm. They're all in agreement together. They want to get you in the hospital. Run you up a big bill. You better learn. Amen. Amen. This is America, man. This ain't no joke. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We on the mission field. You better learn about your mission. Yeah. I'm trying to equip you this morning so you can be effective to reach your people that you call to. Amen. Amen. You got to learn what's on this table. There's a great supper prepared. God's got honey on the table, milk on the table, living water, uh, new wine, the Lamb of God, the bread of life. It's all right here, right now on the, on the table. And it just depends how hungry are you? How thirsty are you? How thirsty are you? How hungry are you? Many people when, they're in their, when they were in their home country, Guatemala, El Salvador, whoo, China, Cameroon, they was on fire for God. They were radical. They would give. They would sow. They would press in. They would be in a prayer meeting. They would storm hell with a dry water pistol. They come through immigration. Well, now they weak, soft, come to church tired. Wow, there's a devil at immigration that, that lies to people from other nations, especially missionaries. You can't go here. You can't do this. You can't preach there. You can't do this. And then that fear comes over their mouth. 
And so they now they got a got a big gag of fear. Oh, fear of man gripped them. And their fire is whew, taken out. Because they didn't realize what they was doing. Then they get caught up in the American, not dream, but American scream. Oh, the American scream. Oh, yeah. Brother John. Yeah, but Johnny's going through a divorce. And Johnny's bankrupt and is up to his eyeballs in debt. But let's be like them. Let's get another job. Let's work our, to the bone. Oh, yeah, let's work 70 hours a week. So we can't serve. Let's get them. Here's the devil. Let's get them working 70 hours a week, three jobs. And let's put one of their jobs way over there in Baltimore and another one over in Rockville. And let's put the third job over there. Uh, where should we put it? Gettysburg! Let's throw it out in Gettysburg. And let us, let us get them. If they're not at work, let them be stuck in traffic. They'll never make it to the church. What is it? Says the lower demon. I'm on it. I'm on it. I'll have them working and stuck in traffic and they'll never go out winning souls. They'll never come to the table of the Lord. They'll never drink from the living water. We'll try them out. We'll use money. We'll use a position. Oh yeah. Let's get them. And so now, you once had the fire of God, you were burning. Let's go. Shake cities, towns, villages. Hallelujah. Me and my wife, we win in souls. We on fire. We givers. We receivers. We, we pray fervently. Now, you used to pray like this. Now pray like this. Like a broke boat motor. Somebody fix their boat motor. It's broke. That's what. That's what. That's what mission fields you on church. You in the heart of the beast. You in the belly of the beast. You in the belly of the beast. Now I'm here to show you the truth. Why? Because God has called you here to receive from the table of the Lord so that you can go out and bring in this harvest, this mission field. How many of you here are you from another nation? You're not from America. Wait, raise your hand. Okay. I'm in the right place, I guess. Praise the Lord. Amen? You say, how did you get this? Well, two years, you know, preaching in... Uh, only God knows how many churches on the streets, you know, every week in the in the communities, you know, preaching the gospel everywhere and, and praying for people. And, you know, I mean, God speaks to you after a while. Amen. Because he cares about the people and he'll give you a word to help them. Amen. God gave me this word in the, mission, in the fields, in the harvest field. Why? To help unhook the people, to set them free. I didn't get this word from. Why? Because God wants to cares for his people and he comes with a word and he comes with the fire of God to set the people free so that he can be released into the mission. If not, this is what happens. Let's read on and then we're going to pray. Well, somebody said, man, I picked the right service to come to. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> man, why did I have to pick this service? <laughs> yeah, God set you up. God set me up many a times. Amen? And I'm glad he did. Amen? I'm glad God set me up. Changed my whole life. And at the hour for the supper, now's the hour. You say, when's the hour for the supper? Now, this weekend, today, right now. He sent his servant, that's me, to say to those who had been invited. Who's been invited? All of you. Come, for all now is ready. Now is ready the supper of the Lord. Now is ready. Is ready. Is ready. Somebody say is ready. He's ready. 
watch this. Here's the American church. Not all of them, but most of them. There are a few fiery ones, amen? There are a few hot ones. God's got a remnant, amen? amen. Somebody say, God's got a remnant. God's got a remnant. But they all alike begin to make excuses. And begin to beg off. Get away from me. Ah! The first said to him, I just bought a piece of land in Gettysburg. And I have to go out and see it. I beg you, please have me excuse. Another said, I bought a Mustang GT. I'm going to examine it up there at the Ford dealership. Put my approval on them. I beg you, please have me excuse. Another said, I just got married. I've been married. I just found me a wife from the camera room, Brother Chris. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can't come. And because it is, I'm unable to come. I can't come. So the servant came. Uh-oh. Servant came and reported these answers to his master. i got to give a report. i got to give a report. There's a report being made on me. Amen. I'm not my own. Listen, I listen. If if a package comes to your house from what do they got? Amazon Prime, is that right? They show up and drop off the box. If you don't like the package, you don't pull out a gun and shoot the Amazon guy. I don't like the message. Boom! UPS pulls up to your house, sir. I've got a delivery package for you, sir. Can you just sign right here? What is it? Uh, I don't know, sir. I'm just the messenger. I, I don't. I'm just here to deliver the message. I'm not the head head guy here. This came from headquarters. Well, I don't like this message. And he pulls out a gun. Boom! Oh, hey, I'm just a messenger. You're just a delivery boy, ain't it? Hallelujah. See, these scriptures right here, when you're on fire for God, this is like a T-bone steak. This is like a New York uh, sirloin. This is the meat of God. This is like, oh, this is like spinach for pie pie. Amen? This is like, oh, this is what will keep you through the years. This is not fluff and puff word this morning. Amen? Yeah. But I think you can handle it. I think you're the right kind of people that can handle the word of God. Amen? amen. This church said amen. This church. <laughs> I ain't hear nothing out of y'all. Amen? If y'all don't start responding, I'm going to think I'm in the white Episcopalian church out in Northern Virginia somewhere. Don't make me think I'm in that white, stiff and starchy church out in Northern Virginia somewhere. Come on, I thought y'all was... Woo. So the servant reported to these answers to his master. Now watch this. Then the master of the house said in anger to his servant, See, the master was angry. Why, why was God angry? Why was the master angry? The Bible says, be angry and sin not. There ain't nothing wrong with getting angry as long as you don't sin. Amen? Amen. The wrath of God produces not the righteousness of God. Why was he angry? Because he had laid out a seven course meal. He had gone through the invitations. How many of you ladies know what it's like to, to decorate? Listen, my wife got a beautiful Nigeria. I don't know what. Maybe it was Nigeria. I heard the Nigerians like to dress up and do the hats and all everything. Beautiful, beautiful. Them, them costumes can cost up to $500, even more than that. They're not cheap. This precious lady got the beautiful green in the outfit. It's beautiful. That outfit probably ain't cheap. She's got beautiful matching earrings. Beautiful bracelet. Look, she's your ring. She's like, please don't call me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I'm using her as an illustration. Amen? Amen? This precious sister, look at her. Look at that beautiful hat she's wearing. Her outfit, she's got the uh, pin on. Why? Because she's king. She's not Dress filthy, dirty, mud all over. No, why? They're dressed because they're coming in the presence of the King of Kings. You don't come in the court of the King of Kings 
dress like a slob. No. Okay, so it's just like that. Well, you, you got to know then, if you come and dressed all up, well, you must be going somewhere. You don't dress, get dressed up like that to go to McDonald's. No. Do you? No. you? Do you get dressed up like that to go to Burger King and eat a Whopper? No. no. So if you do your nails, fix your hat, do everything. You expect that when you go somewhere to eat a nice meal. Why do you take the time to get all dressed up and pretty pretty if you're going to nothing? That would not make any sense, would it? It would not make any sense. No, they must be coming dressed all up beautifully arrayed expecting something. They must be knowing that there's something special that they're coming to and, and they're getting dressed up for a special reason. Why did the master get mad? Because he spent the time on all the decorations. He spent the time on all the prep, all the food, the meal, the angels of God, the presence of the tables, fine white linen. And then the invitations go out and then people don't show up. Put yourself in the master's shoes. What if you decked out yourself? What if you went to the nine yards like this precious lady did and, and got dressed all up beautifully? And then you did all the decorations. Decorations, man, take time. Then you put out all the, the linen cloth and the fine china and you go to the grocery store. You don't go to Walmart. You go to Whole Foods. Whole paycheck. Hallelujah. <laughs> you go to Whole Foods. And you cook all the dinner, and guess what? You send out the invitations, and the people don't show up to your house. What would you do? Huh? Come on, talk to me. What would you do? Angry. Upset. I spent all this time. I spent all this money. I got dressed up. I did my hair. I put on my best, best dress that I have. I prepared a table before them. And they didn't show up. You'd be angry too. So you, you can understand now why he was angry. It wasn't just because he's a mean. Mean? No. He, if you go through all the time and spend all of that, the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the earth, Jesus. There's a table before us in the presence of the enemies. You'd be upset too. So he said to his servant, he said, go quickly out in the highways and the hedges. We're fixing to pray. He who endures to the end shall be saved. Glory to God. So then the servant came and reported his master. Master said in his wrath, go quickly into the street. Did he say go slowly? What did he say? Go quickly. Some people said they want to go out after the service. Who is that? I can't remember. Let me see his hands. Oh. Go quickly! <laughs> Some people are like, Is it yes or is it no? Oh, the spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. <laughs> go quickly into the great streets and the small streets. That means go everywhere. In the city and bring it here to poor, the blind and lame. Why? And the servant returned and said, Sir, what you've commanded to me has been done. See, that's what you want to have on your report card. Yes. Sir, what you have commanded me, not suggested to me. What you have commanded me, me. I'm pointing at me. Not even pointing at you now. I'm pointing at me. What you have commanded me to do, sir, has been done. And yet, there is still room. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges and compel the lost and dying to come in so that my house may be filled. God wants his house filled. Your heavenly father, let me break it down to you in a greater way. Your heavenly father wants his house filled because he's prepared a beautiful, great supper. 
If I had time, I'd take you and show you what Jesus is dressed up like this morning. For the Great Supper. You get to the Great Supper and watch what Jesus is dressed up in. I can take you away right now and show you. But I don't know if you can handle that. Because he's the one it's all about. He's why we're celebrating. Now, well, listen to this. This is a very sad note. I pray this never happens to you. For I tell you, not one of those who were invited shall taste of my supper. Not one of those who were invited shall taste of my supper. And then you see a period. This is concerning God's son. And the celebration about him. This is not about Brother Chris, Pastor John. This is about Jesus. When he came to me, I said, Lord, you've been so good to me. I cannot, I cannot refuse the invitations. Whatever I got to do, whatever I got to go, whatever I got to sell. I'll put me and my wife on a plane. I'll spend four months. I'll rent cars for four months. Lord, I'll do whatever. By your grace, for your glory, I'll run. I'll go to as many churches as I want, as you want me to. I'll go to Africa. I'll go to, I'll go to wherever. It doesn't matter. If they like me, great. If they don't like me, great, Lord. It doesn't matter. I'll, I'll obey you because you've been too good to me. And I know what's on this table. And I know who we celebrate. And I cannot take this for granted. That's why I'm here this morning. That's what brought me here this morning from Honolulu, Hawaii. Who leaves Honolulu to go to Washington, D.C.? Nobody in their right mind. Unless God sends you. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. We're going to pray this morning. Jesus stands with arms wide open this morning. He's arrayed in the royal robes of righteousness. His eyes are burning like fire this morning. His hair is washed white as wool. His face is shining brighter than the noonday sun. In His hand are the stars of heaven. Is a bronze br breastplate Golden. His feet are like burning bronze burning in a furnace. And he stands here with arms wide open this morning. He loves you. The Bible says, To him that overcomes, I will grant to eat with me in the great supper. If you hear my voice today, don't harden. I, I tenderly love. Them. Convict of their sin. Tell their faults. So that they can eat at this supper. And that they can go and give these invitations out. The time is now. Church. Maybe you're here this morning. And you say, man, I'm... Well, the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The good news is, the Bible says that he that comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. The Bible says it's the goodness of God that leads people to repent. It's God's kindness. He's so kind. I've known Jesus to be so kind over the years. He's the God of the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance, the fifth chance. He's the way maker. He stands with pools of, of love in his eyes for you. He loves you. Will you come today to the great supper? Will you receive the invitations from heaven? Will you come with thankfulness and a humble heart and say, Lord, I thank you for what you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies? He must love this church very much to give such a wonderful word like this. He must think so much about you, and he does. If that's you today, maybe you need to get saved. You need to get saved today. You're watching online. You need to be saved. I want you to, I'm going to pray for you. Maybe you need to get on fire for God. You have not been giving out the invitations. You've been making excuses. You've been making excuses. But today's the day. No more excuses.
of why I'm not handing out these invitations to this great supper. I want to pray for you. And lastly, if you just need to make sure, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. If that three of those calls, the Spirit of God is doing the work in your heart, I want you to lift your hands right now and say, yes, Lord, pray for me. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Lift your hands high. Yes, Lord. God bless you. 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 Yes. All it takes is a yes. And the blood of Jesus will wash away every sin. Wash away every condemnation. Wash away every guilt. And he'll clothe you with a robe of righteousness this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. He's looking for a yes. The willing and the obedient shall eat the good of the land. If that was you, you raise your hand right now. You know what's available right now. You online. You raise your hand. Or you knew in your spirit you should have raised your hand. It don't matter if you're a leader. It don't matter who you are. It matters who he is. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to get up out of your seat right now. You raise your hand. You knew you should have it. And I want you to come to this altar right now. We're going to pray. Come to the table of the Lord. Come to the great supper. And when you come up here, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to lift your hands to heaven. And I want you to start thanking the Lord for this table. I want you to start thanking Him that He's got a place for you. There's a seat for you. Hallelujah. No one comes to God unless the Holy Ghost draws them. Nobody's coming unless the Spirit of God is working. Hallelujah. 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 There's more. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a couple more seconds just to get on up here you're not winning souls you've been distracted you've not been drinking the living water of God you've not been drinking the new wine of God you're empty, you need to be up here air of salvation come you can't hear the cry of the lost anymore you need to be up here you disobeyed the Holy Ghost in the harvest. You don't preach the Word of God to people in the streets anymore. You need to be up here. You don't want to miss these rewards. Don't miss out. Don't miss the rewards. It's the grace of God. Anyone else before we close it and pray? Yes, Lord, I'll count to five. One, two, three. God's getting you ready. I looked at this sister right in front of me. I just feel the word of the Lord say to you, He's getting you ready. He knew you'd be here this morning. He knows you by name. All the hairs on your head are numbered, says the Lord, and He loves you. His thoughts for you are more than the grand, grains of sand on the beaches of the world. He loves you. He's getting you ready. Taste to see that the Lord is good this morning. Dios es bueno. Dios es bueno. La presencia. La presencia de Dios. Many people rush through the table. They never even get to the dessert. In America, people rush. In Africa, they don't rush. They don't rush through the table of God. On the dessert. In America, people don't even get through the main 
archery half the time. Did too much in a hurry. Missed the dessert. God's raising this young man up. God's going to raise this young man. The hand of God is on you. I see you as a mighty prayer warrior. God's going to give you territory. God's going to give you territory. What is your name? Jeremy. Power of God's on you. Close your eyes, Jeremy. Lift your hands. The Holy Ghost is on you. Kurrabajendo. Father. will never be the same again after this day. Man, that word for you, God has got something special He's really getting you ready for. He thinks a lot about you. He sure does think a lot about you. And you're not on the back burner. You're on the front burner, says the Lord. And I feel the Holy Ghost saying He's glad that you came this morning. He appreciates that. He appreciates that. He hears your cry. He's heard your cry driving down the street. See you driving down the street just crying out to God, just talking to the Lord about some things. The Lord said, He's hurt you. He's hurt you. Go forward in faith. Go forward. He's with you. He's for you. He's not against you. He said, let peace be the umpire of your soul. There's decisions that'll come, but let peace... Let the peace of God settle the questions that you may have. Because He's the Prince of Peace. As she puts you first, take care of her family. Wherever they may be right now, Lord, go after them. Go after them. Take her places she could have never gone to without you, Lord. I see you going places. New places. Traveling. With Jesus. Walking on water. Walking on the water of the Word. The faith of God coming on you. You need His help. He's here to help you. <laughs> see great joy over your life. Great joy. There's great joy. Pray this with me. Say, Jesus, Jesus. I come to the table of the Lord. I missed out on. Lord, I receive now. Thank you for total restoration. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me, Lord, of all my sins. Wash me in the blood. Cleanse me from head to toe. The royal robe of righteousness on me. I receive the garments from every distraction. Every is lifted off my life. Lord, you bless me. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm not going to say no to you, Lord. I know your plans are great. And all your plans are good for me. And I don't want my own way. I want your way. Your way is better. Far greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than you. Thank you. I just begin to thank you. in your heart. It starts with a heart change. God's here to change hearts this morning. In order for me to be here, God had to do a work in my heart. Change my mind. 
Amen. And I'm so glad he did. I'm so grateful. I don't want to be the person I used to be. Amen. I don't want to go back. Hallelujah. I feel the compassion of God. The Lord is touching me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. The touch of God. Yes. <laughs> the compassion of the Lord is just falling on people like this. The compassion of the Lord is falling. But God's touching people. A lot of the pastors, I don't understand it. At a certain point, if, if people needed to go, I would just say, listen, if you got somewhere else to be, we love you. No condemnation. Bless you. Just go ahead. Go ahead. But never cater to lukewarm people. Cater to the, the fire people. Raise the standard high. Set the standard for the own fire with you. Make everybody else come up to the fire level. But release people to go if they got to go. No condemnation. But there are people that are hungry that need miracles. People need miracles. People need miracles. Ma'am, close your eyes. Lift your hands right here. Shiko Rabba Dele Bresumri Shendo Burri Bagandi Libraso to the Begini Bagoro, Dengolo Sambri Elebro to the Maya. Man, Jengolo Sombra, you've come a long way, says the Lord. He's brought you a mighty long way. He's the author and the perfecter of your faith. And the Lord declares you as His precious jewel. There's a difference. Is written in it according, according to Malachi chapter 3. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? He or she that has clean hands and a pure heart. That's it. sorrow attached to God's blessing on your life. It won't be a burden, it'll be a blessing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. God's handing out gifts right now. There's gifts just falling right now all over this place. Gifts. Gifts. falling on you. Just close your eyes. I just saw the anointing. It's just like rain. It's just like rain coming down. It's the rain of God. The Lord is restoring your strength. Months and months of just you pouring out and working for God. He says, now I just want to fill your cup. Lord, I thank you for just filling this precious woman of God's her strength. He's restoring your soul. You'll run and not grow weary. You'll walk and not faint. Your latter years shall be greater than your former. He renews your strength like an eagle. Strong, overcoming, and soaring. You're a Mary, not a Martha, says the Lord. You've chosen the good portion to sit at my feet and listen to my word, and that will not be taken away from you. It will never be taken away from you. 
for you are precious in the Lord's sight. His eyes upon you. His eyes upon you. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayer. For the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro the whole earth, looking for someone strong on their behalf. And I see the Lord showing himself strong on your behalf. And his eyes are open, and his ears are listening to your prayers. He hears you, and he answers by fire. Thank you, Lord, for all the answered prayers that have come through this mighty woman of God. I encourage you, Pastor, to go get a journal and just write all the answered prayers. As you begin to write down all the things God's done for you through prayer, you're going to come out of there with, with a message of might and victory that's going to bring blessing to many people. God's got that he's going to use you to speak to his a message of victory and might and power. Write it down and watch what God's going to do through you. Well, hallelujah. Come on, let's just give praise to the Lord right now. Amen. Glory to God. 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 New songs of control. New songs. New songs. Songs of heaven. Songs of heaven. Hallelujah. Close your eyes, the anointing's on. Yeah, yeah. Power yeah. Come on. The touch of God. A lot of times the outward is just a sign of what's going on on the inside. You are on the inside, says the Lord. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. And you are beautiful, says the Lord, inside and out. And you declare my glory. In Jesus' name. That's the power of God. Something, she's never going to be the same again. Just take it. Usher's him. Jesus, touch. It's got to go through your whole family. To you, in you, and through you. To you, in you, and through you. To you, in you, and through you. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Of the Holy Ghost. is going to hit your family. It's going to hit. It's going to strike like lightning. Like lightning. It's going to strike the power of God. power of God is going to strike through that woman. Like a Holy Ghost tornado. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Hey, I'm standing right now. The power of God's going to be just see it, God, come. Yes, you, yes. Close your eyes and lift your hands. That's the power of God falling right now. Yeah, yeah. That's the anointing. That's the yeah, heat of yeah, God. The fire. Yeah, yeah. Power in Jesus' name. Touch. 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 <laughs> it's not just for those up here. People are being touched in their seat. You don't even know what the anointing is falling all over this place. If you put your eyes on Jesus, you can receive. God's looking for somebody to bless right now. He's looking for somebody. He's pouring out his spirit. You're going to run. Sister, you're going to run. You're going to run. I see you running. I see you running. I see you running with the fire. You're going to run. 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 You're gonna run! <laughs> You're gonna run! God's got an anointing to run right now. Whoever wants 
to run. You can run. Come on, you can run. Come on, it's time to run. This is where it starts. This is how your whole life changes. It starts in you first. Then it happens out there. It don't happen out there first. It happens in your spirit. God is a spirit. And God is moving by his spirit and changing people's lives right now. God is saying, rise up and I will run through your life. Pastor, son, just come. Come, 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 come right now. Where's your wife? Huh? Go get her, go get her, go get her, go get her, go get her. There's something else happening in his family. In his family. Mando Mentioned they go to Mama to give me a gun to give me a gun. Yes, Mambo, then my mom drop on the bread. You say, is this real? You better believe it's real. Mambo, read that did you run the only bring it to Galavaca? She go the man to give you a little drop of Mamba, Mamba, that they did. He the Bogan, I stood. Yes, you got it, you got it, you got it. desires. The Bible says if you delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you your heart's desires. And I see the Lord fulfilling the very secret petitions of your heart. And the Lord is bringing to pass those things as you will put Him first. Those things that nobody else knows about. The Bible says the Shunammite woman, she made room for the anointing. And the anointing made room for her. And I see the anointing coming on you guys. And your family. The blessing of God is on this family. And God is doing a new thing. He's doing a fresh thing. He's doing a great thing. And it will be. It will be. It will be. It will be all that he said it would be. Stand on the word. There's strength in the prayer of agreement. One will put a thousand to flight. Yeah. Two shall put ten thousand to flight. You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established. You come together. You write down what you believe in God for. And if you write it down, it shall come to pass as you get in agreement with each other. Get in agreement. The Lord did that for me and my wife, for our baby. Everything supernaturally. Nothing missing, nothing like it. Over and above, no bills, nothing. Everything we desire, everything was met. As we got an agreement and we declared the word, it was all paid in full, supernatural. And so shall it be for you. And I see y'all ministering as a family. I see you ministering as a family. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glory to God. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Come on, let's give all the glory and praise to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God for all the souls that have been saved. It's only the beginning of what the Lord is going to do in this place. Amen. How are you doing? You doing good? It's awesome what God's doing in your life. Amen. Well, you may have a seat if you can. Praise the Lord. I want to do one last thing and I'm going to turn it over to Pastor. How many of you, you've been blessed this morning? Man, I know I have. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, this is like a five-star restaurant. This is the great supper. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you feel like you just had a good meal? Amen. Yeah. We, didn't, we, didn't feed, look, we didn't feed you junk food this morning. We're not, we're not coming to feed you spiritual junk food. Amen. We come to feed you that will, which will sustain you and your family. Amen. From Chef Jesus. Here's what I want to do. I want to give you online. You've been touched. But here's, here's the thing about what I felt in my heart this morning. In this area, and the attack that's come against the church is come through the love of money and the cares of the world. And it's come for your soul. It's come for your soul. It's not a game. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Everything stems from that love of money. And that spirit is strong and it comes to take the soul. The Bible says what shall a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen. And you can't serve God and money. You got to choose who you're going to serve. Joshua says, for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And the test is this. The test is, the Bible says, where your treasure is, there's your heart. You show me your, you show me your checkbook, and I'll show you where your heart is at. Because where your treasure is, God linked money to your heart. Not for your money's sake, because he his his streets are made of gold. The ground he walks on is gold. So that shows you how gold is, what gold is to him. It's nothing. It's like dirt to us. Gold. The great I am. Hallelujah. But he linked this thing right here to our heart. Why? Because he wants our heart. But the devil also wants your heart. The world wants your heart. And there are quite a few of you in here. That, that, that spirit has been strong against you, that love of money spirit. And that's why you, you've not been able to come. You've not been able to, to do what you used to do and be who you used to be. Because of pressure and the burden. Ask the rich young ruler. Jesus said, go sell you all you have and give to the poor. And he dropped his head and walked away. Because he could not. It was so strong on him that that worldly treasures and riches they, they got his heart Jesus wasn't after his riches he was after his heart and he could not let go of it he couldn't give him his heart Jesus was after his heart Jesus went right to his heart God offends your mind to reveal your heart God offends this thing to reveal where your heart is at and if there's ever a time in your life God doesn't always require everything like me four months ago I got rid of everything done that several times. If God asks, I'll do it again. Because those are not where my joy is at. That's not where my life is at. Amen? He doesn't ask everybody to do that all the time. He doesn't. But if he ever did ask you to do something and you couldn't do it, that's an idol. That's an idol. If he ever pointed his finger at something and said that right there, and you said, no, I cannot. That means that thing is an idol between you and God. And God offends your mind. He's done that to me many times. I've given away cars, suits, money, emptied the banking account. Why? Because things, I don't want things becoming an idol in my heart. God is doing heart surgery in this church today. He's a great physician. And he's got the anointing here. Amen. 
to bring healing. The anointing is bringing healing and life and strength and restoration. But there are things that have gotten in the way from you receiving the true riches. If you're not faithful with unrighteous mammon, who will trust you with the true riches, the anointing, and the treasures? The treasures are the people. When you go to hell, when you go to heaven today, guess what's the most valued thing in both places? Talk to me. People. People. The fight is over people. It's not over money. When you go to hell, you're not going to see dollar bills down there. You're going to see people. When you go to heaven, you're not going to see dollar bills. You're going to see people. Because that's what the fight is over. Amen.